Hello, welcome to another Bible study with myself, Andrew Allen, and we, this is going to uh, call, be called uh, Preach the Gospel number 12, and I want to continue our studies of the 300 strong, mighty army of Gideon, the Israelites, and I, now I want to move it from the Old Testament and bring it through the 21st century and show how that study, how that incident is relevant to our lives today. The question that I have been, the unspoken question that has been asked over our two last sessions is, are Christians at war today? In the normal European context, are we at war? I am suggesting that although the arena has changed, and even though the battle has changed, the nature of the battle has changed, I suspect that we are at war. But I want us to go through this Bible study together and judge this matter for yourself. And let's start by taking a closer look at the enemies of Israel. Because when I looked at it previously, I thought it was just one. But when you look at it again, We've been focusing on Judges chapter 7. If you look at Judges chapter 6, verses 3 through to 6, we'll actually find that there are enemies of Israel are three. Verse 3 says this, So it was, whenever Israel sowed, the Midianites would come up, also the Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. Verse 4, then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza and leave no substance, neither sheep nor ox. Did you catch that? Each harvest time, this went on for years, three groups of people would come together and destroy the harvest of Israel. Verse 5 says this, for they would come up with their livestock and their tents and come in numerous, as numerous as locusts. Both they, and, both they and their camels were without number and they would enter the land and destroy it. Verse 6. So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. We skip to chapter 7 and verse 9. It ends, the story ends well. And it happened on the same night that the Lord spoke to him, him being Gideon, Arise, go down against the camp, for I have delivered them into your hands. So, Israel were perpetually facing several enemies. Simultaneously, the Midianites, the Amalekites and the people from the east and together they were like locusts you couldn't count them why is that relevant to today because Gideon was in the land of promise the land called Canaan Canaan went on to be called Israel Canaan is a metaphor for the promised land it is a metaphor for you moving from oppression to liberation. It is a metaphor for moving from a place of sin, being under the yoke, being under the bondage of sin, into a place of grace. Canaan could be seen as your house, your business, your children, your wife, your husband, Anything that God has given you, including your church, your faith, and what the story of Gideon is pointing to is that we should seek to defend those things which God gave us in covenant against any and all defenders, even if our enemies are countless. Watch this. The 22,000 Israeli soldiers abandoned, gave up the land, gave in to the enemies because they thought that God was not with them. And they thought that because they worshipped 
other gods. They were caught worshipping other gods. But brother Andrew, we are not at war. There are no idols in my house, you say. Let's look more closely at that. Do you struggle to hold Bible study in your house? Can you remember the last time you fasted? Can you remember the last time you read a full chapter of the Bible? Do you find yourself in the middle of a service in church and you're on Instagram? You're at home and you're watching a church service online and you cannot sit down for 40 minutes without being distracted and getting up and moving out of place, out of position. You're not focusing. The Bible talks about the word being sown and some reaping a great harvest and some falling on stony ground. Why? Because you say you're listening, but it is clear from your actions you haven't heard. Your home, my brother, your home, my sister, is under attack. You have become like Eve, who did not discern that her home was under attack. And then Adam blames Eve for the destruction of her house. And no doubt Eve will blame Adam, saying, well, you're the head of the house. Where was my spiritual covering? But the house fell, and great was their fall. So, I am not saying the war is the same. The war has changed. When we get to the arrival of Jesus Christ, in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through to 11, we begin to get an insight into how the battleground and the warfare has changed. Satan tempted Jesus Christ with the distractions and the vanity of this world. There was no blood, but do not be deceived. Jesus Christ and Satan were at war. Satan is at war with us. His name means adversary. He's com continually on the offensive. And Jesus Christ is our advocate working on our defense. Even the terminology suggests and confirms that we are at war. Jesus goes on to defend do later on confirm in chapter 12 Matthew chapter 4 of 29 he says or how can a strong man enter house and plan to and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will come and plunder his house what am I saying your house that was destroyed in this physical realm children fight against each other husband fight against wives I'm suggesting that your house, based on Matthew chapter 12, verse 29, your house, your house that was destroyed in this physical realm was first destroyed in the spiritual realm. The strong man was taken out and Satan entered and destroyed the house. The Bible says that the Midianites, the Amalekites and the people of the East attacked simultaneously. COVID has stripped the church corporately. Social media has stripped the church in our homes. Political correctness has silenced the church. Satan's temptations still are successful in working on our emotions to self-destruct ourselves, to destruct ourselves. Satan has no authority to destroy us. But what he does is he tempts us to destroy ourselves and to destroy one another with strife. God has given us a gift. Satan tempts us out what God has ordained for us. We get to the promised land and we turn back. The battle is too fierce. We can't be bothered. There are too many challenges. Let me go back. The 22,000 men said, let us go back.
Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12, says this. In the Old Testament, we have those three enemies. In the New Testament, we have, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Number two, against powers. Number three, against rulers of darkness. And watch this, number four, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. We're talking about 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks in the year. These spirits don't need rest. They wouldn't know what it is. That, according to Ephesians 6, verses 12, that is what's coming against you and your house every single day. And there's a pattern. The scripture says in Judges 6, they came every harvest time. So now check your life. Check the past. Look at it again. Look closer. And what do you see? Do you see a cyclical pattern? A cyclical manifestation? Just as you're about to enter what is God has ordained for you, it is destroyed. And you think that's a coincidence? Is it possible that someone is watching and studying your pressure points and then applies pressure at just the right time? Just the right gentle word? That's what the snake said to Eve. He didn't say anything he didn't say go and murder Adam. It wasn't, it's never, it's never like that. And that is the problem. It is subtle. The destruction of your house is going to be subtle. So then what is the solution? I'm glad you asked. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing. So now we come back full circle. Galatians 5 chapter, Galatians 5 verses 6 to 9 says, just as Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Verse 8. And the scriptures, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham, beforehand saying, In you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 9, so then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. God was the first one that preached the gospel and he preached it to Abraham who shared it with the Hebrews and opened the doors to the Gentiles. And both groups are supposed to participate in the covenant blessings of Abraham. So, while you are being systematically distracted by the enemy and refusing or, or omitting to preach the gospel, not only are souls going to hell, but the covenant blessings that they were supposed to receive, them and their children's children, they are outside the covenant. So what should we do? What can we do to make things better? Well, let me give you an example. If your church is situated in a gang related area for each gang member that you minister the gospel to and they put down their knife they put down their sword you have just reduced the army of the Lord by one and that is all I want us to do one by one let us take people out of depression let us take them out of drugs let them take them out of the gang they take them out of crime and take them out of indifference Jesus Christ said, make disciples of all nations.